Hi there, this is Richard Walker from Lucidate. Welcome to this interest rate swap explainer video. In our previous video, we discussed what an interest rate swap is and why different firms would wish to enter into swap contracts. We're going to look at swap pricing and risk management. We'll see how to use the prices of fixed income instruments, such as government bonds, to calculate discount rates. Government bonds provide a fixed cash flow at maturity when they return the face value of the bond. Many bonds also pay fixed cash flows in the form of periodic coupons. The price that investors are willing to pay for these fixed future cash flows, both the return of principal and the periodic coupons, allows us to assess interest rates. As we shall see, we can not only use the prices of these instruments to give us the discount rate, but we can also use these prices to forecast forward rates. For example, what the market thinks that the six month rate of interest will be one year from now. These spot rates and forward rates allow us to price swaps. We can use the spot rate to get the present value of future swap cash flows. And we can use the forward rate to forecast the floating rate on each swap fixing day. So how do we go about this? How do we get the rates that we will need to help us price swaps? Well, we can use the prices of fixed income instruments that trade in the market. Bond prices tell us about the market's expectation of future interest rates. Or put a slightly different way, the fair price of a bond reflects the expectation of future interest rates. For our purposes, we won't look at corporate bonds that carry credit risk and may have embedded optionality and floating rates. Instead, we will look at risk-free government bonds that carry fixed coupons. While different government bonds will have different characteristics, for instance, US Treasuries and UK gilts pay coupons semi-annually or twice a year, whereas German bunds pay an annual coupon, they all share common attributes. They will carry an interest rate on which the coupon is calculated and they will pay back their face value at maturity. They trade at a price where a par price or par value is 100. So a par value bond, that is to say a bond trading around 100, implies that the market expects that interest rates will be close to the coupon of that bond. A bond trading at a discount, i.e. a price below 100, implies that the market expects interest rates will be above the bond coupon. And a bond trading at a premium implies rates below the bond's coupon rate. To see how the traded prices of these instruments tell us about the expected levels of interest rates, let's quickly review some interest rate mathematics and cash flow mechanics. The formula for calculating the present value of the future cash flow is shown on your screen. This formula has four inputs. The future value of the cash flow, the interest rate used to discount that cash flow to today. Sometimes you'll hear this called the spot rate or the zero coupon rate the number of compounding periods in a year, that is to say two for semi-annual, four for quarterly, and the number of years into the future that this particular cash flow is paid. So for interest calculated annually, e.g. German bunds, the formula is as shown. It already looks less daunting. For semi-annual coupon payments, e.g. gilts and treasuries, we account for semi-annual payments with this formula. So if we take as an example a five-year US Treasury bond with a 4% coupon trading at par, we would have the following economics. For every $100 we bought, we would receive 10 coupon payments of $2 every six months and at maturity receive the principal of $100. The price of this investment will move in the opposite 
direction to interest rates. If rates rise, then the bond price will fall and vice versa. Let's review why. Here's the bond again. We see the 10 coupon payments and the final repayment of principal. The present value of all the cash flows, both the coupons and the final repayment, will all be discounted using our present value formula illustrated earlier. The fair price of the bond is the dollar value today that exactly equals the present value of all future cash flows. This is an equilibrium price. In theory, an investor should be indifferent to buying or selling at this value. If interest rates rise, then the value of the bond will fall. You can think of this in two different ways. Firstly, opportunity costs. If rates rise above 4%, then there are clearly better returns than this 4% coupon available elsewhere. Two, discounting. The interest rate term is the denominator in our present value equation. Therefore, higher discount rates must mean lower present values. Clearly, the reverse is also true. If rates fall, or more precisely, if there's an expectation of a future rate fall, then the price of the bond will rise. In order to price the bond or any such similar instrument, such as a swap with periodic cash flows, we need to determine the spot rates or zero coupon rates on each of the future cash flow dates. Let's see how we can go about this. Here are four US Treasuries with differing coupons from 3% to 6% and varying maturities from six months to two years. To keep the illustration simple, we'll assume at first that all bonds are trading at par and we buy a nominal $100 of each. We'll then investigate matters later when the prices are different from 100, but frankly, not much changes, so don't get too excited. The different cash flow profiles of each of these four bonds can be seen on the screen. Please feel free to pause the video to make sure you can see which bond is which and agree with all of the coupon cash flows. Let's take the first bond which has a single cash flow in six months time. We pay $100 now and receive $101.50 in six months. This is essentially a discount instrument with a 3% coupon and six months to maturity. It's therefore trivial to calculate the discount rate. It must be 3%. But bear with me and let's work through the maths. We can plug in our known values into our PV calculation and rearrange it to solve for R, our six month discount rate. We know that this must be 3%. So let's check. Our PV is $100 and our cash flow in six months time is $101.50. This is a treasury. We have two accrual periods a year and the time in years until this cash flow is 0.5. So let's plug these values into our formula again. Feel free to pause the video to make sure that you know where the numbers come from. The left hand side is our PV of the bond, $100 shown in red. On the right hand side, we have our $101.50 in the numerator, while our denominator contains the six month rate that we're trying to calculate that we know must be 3% along with the two periods per year in purple and the half a year until the cash flow gets paid in gold. Got that? Good. Then let's rearrange to get our six month rate on the left hand side. One huge simplification here is that the exponent in the denominator is one. So we can simply flip the one plus rate over two with the hundred dollars in red. Ready looking a lot better. Now we can subtract one from each side, then multiply both sides by two. And we do get the 3% that we knew we would get. Now let's look at the second bond. 
This has two cash flows, a small cash flow of $1.75 in six months time and a larger cash flow of $101.75 in one year. For these two cash flows in the future, we pay now $100. This is the equilibrium price that exactly balances these two cash flows. So in the previous example, we calculated our six month discount rate. This was a trivial 3%. Therefore, we can easily work out the PV of the first coupon cash flow using our PV formula. We know the future value of this first cash flow. This is $1.75. And we just calculated the six month discount rate as 3%. We also know the interest calculation frequency. This is twice a year and the term is half a year. We can therefore plug all these values into the present value formula that we see on the screen. This equates to just over $1.72. Stated another way, a cash flow of $1.75 in six months time is worth just over $1.72 today. Alternatively, if we invested $1.72 today, we would have $1.75 in six months time. So far, so good. But the fair price of this one year bond is 100. And this will be the sum of the present value of all future cash flows. We've determined that the present value of the cash flow in six months time is $1.72. That means that the PV of the second cash flow must be equal to approximately $98.27.5. This is an extremely helpful result. With this, we now have all the information that we need to calculate the one year discount rate. Do you see how? We know the present value of this cash flow that's $98.27.5. We know the future cash flow is $101.75. We know the calculation frequency and the term. So we can plug the exact values of all of these variables into our present value equation. As before, we have some rearrangement to do to express this formula in terms of our discount rate. We can first divide both sides by 98.28 and multiply both sides by the denominator of the right hand side. We can take the square root of both sides, then subtract one and finally multiply the result of that subtraction by two. Again, this is maths. Please pause and rewind the video if you need to make sure you know where all the steps and all the terms come from. The result of all this maths is that our one year discount rate is 3.504%. So great, we have our six month and our one year discount rates from the prices of these two bonds. Let's press on and work out our 18 month rate. Here, our bond has three cash flows, two bucks and a quarter in six months time and another two bucks and a quarter in one year's time. The final cash flow is $102.25. We're stating that the fair price of these cash flows is $100. This means that the $100 price we pay today exactly equals the present value of all the future cash flows. As we've already calculated the six month and the one year discount rate, we have all the information that we need to calculate the PV of the first two cash flows. The PV of the first coupon is approximately $2.22. The $2.25 coupon in one year's time is worth $2.17 today. As the fair price of this bond is 100, we therefore know that the PV of the final cash flow must be $95.61. 
Once again, this means we have all the information we need to calculate our 18 month discount rate. We can plug the present value, future value, calculation frequency and term into our now familiar equation. Once again, let's rearrange this formula to get the discount rate on the left hand side. The rearranged formula tells us to take our cube root, subtract one and double this result to get our discount rate. The result here is 4.527%. Finally, we can review how to calculate our two year discount rate by using the rates already discovered and the characteristics of this two year bond. We know that our fair price of $100 is the sum of the present value of all our future cash flows. I'm sure that you can see by now that there's nothing special about the bonds trading at par. This bond could be trading at 99, a discount, or 101.375, a premium. Our calculation process will be the same. Clearly, we'll get different discount rates if our bond prices differ from 100, but the process remains the same. As before, we have every piece of information we need to calculate the present value of our first three coupons. I've written these values on the screen, but please feel free to use the present value formula to calculate these values yourself. With these present value calculations and the purchase price of the bond, we can rearrange the equation to get our two year rate on the left hand side. Working through the maths gives us a two year discount rate of 6.097 percent. This is a great outcome. This technique is called bootstrapping, so-called because you're using the results of previous calculations as a foundation to calculate rates further out in time. We were able to bootstrap using the zero coupon rates from the coupon and principal payment dates of the bonds used to build our curve. But Clearly, this is only a small set of dates. What if we need a rate on another date? Well, no problem. We can simply interpolate the rate between two points that we have already calculated. There are many interpolation conventions used in the market, linear, log linear, piecewise linear, which all have their grounding in mathematics. Splines, such as cubic spline or quadratic spline, which have their provenance in physics, and techniques like monotone convex, which is focused specifically on the financial properties of zero curves. As we can see on the screen, where the horizontal axis shows the time in years to two decimal places, we can get our zero rates for the specific dates that we calculated. One year, 18 months, six months and two years, but also interpolated rates for any fractional year that we choose. 0.65 of a year, 1.95 of a year, 0.95 of a year or 1.3 years. We have a curve that will allow us to get the zero coupon rate and hence the present value of any cash flow out to two years. We'd like to be able to get discount factors beyond two years and as we can get the prices of liquid fixed income instruments out to 60 years, in some cases beyond, we can build a much larger curve. Here you can see the zero coupon rates for a number of maturities out to 60 years and a curve interpolated with a monotone convex function. We can see our discount rates for every date in the future. Here we see five years, 12 and a half years, 20 years and one quarter, and 55 years and three quarters. In addition to giving us discount rates for the next 60 years, we can also derive forward rates. The formula on the right of the screen shows us the implied forward RF between the five year point and the 10 year point. This is the five year forward rate five years from now. 
we can take the values from our curve and calculate this forward rate. Likewise, we can get the 11 year forward rate seven years from now, as well as the 23 year forward rate 17 years from now. These rates are all very interesting, but perhaps of little practical use. What is of use, however, are forward rates that match the floating rate indices on our swap contracts. Recall that we might wish to forecast one year rates for some euro denominated swaps. Commonly, we might wish to look at six month forwards for dollar and sterling derivatives. If we want to forecast the six month forward rate 25 years from now, we can plug in the values into our forward rate formula and determine that the forecast rate is 1.5402%. For overnight index swaps such as Sonia, we can calculate an array of daily forward rates and plug these into our compound average formula to arrive at a forecast rate for our date in question. So we can use our zero coupon curve to accurately price our swap contract. Recall that a swap is a recipe for generating cash flows. From the contract definition, we can derive all of our interest accrual period dates, our payment dates, and the dates we will sample and fix our floating rate. Our zero coupon curve allows us to forecast our floating rates on reset dates. In this way, we have all the information we need to determine the future value of all our swap cash flows, both fixed and floating. Our zero coupon curve also allows us to determine the present value of these future cash flows, as we have an actual or interpolated discount rate for every date into the future. We can thus determine the present value of any interest rate swap contract. But it doesn't stop there. The zero coupon curve is literally the gift that keeps on giving. Zero coupon curves can help us determine the rate sensitivity of single swaps or whole portfolios of interest rate derivatives. If the market shifts in sentiment and sells off long dated bonds and with these proceeds purchases short dated instruments, then our curve will steepen. Likewise, if investors have a preference for longer dated maturities, then our curve will flatten. If bonds sell off, then the zero curve will experience a parallel shift upwards. However, if there's a demand for bonds of all maturities, as has happened with QE, then prices will rise in all bond maturities and the curve will have a parallel shift down. While less common, the curve may also twist or flex around certain maturities. All of these changes in curve shape will alter our discount rates and forward rates. We can thus see how price sensitive our portfolios of swaps are to these changes. With historic market data sources such as Bloomberg or the awesome amount of information provided for free by the St. Louis Fed, we can look at historic rate shocks. We can reflect these changes in movements in our zero coupon curves and see the impact of the price on our swap portfolios. We can, of course, construct extreme but plausible scenarios of our own and thus get an insight into the risks in our portfolio. How would our valuations change in a Lehman default scenario? What about the changes in rates brought about by the UK Brexit vote? An extreme parallel shift or an extreme steepening or flattening. The zero curve gives us the tools we need to assess the sensitivities and risks in our portfolio, as well as help us suggest hedges that will neutralize some of these risks. We've thus seen how to construct a zero coupon curve using a method called bootstrapping. This takes the prices of liquid fixed income instruments and incrementally builds up a zero coupon curve as instruments of longer and longer maturities are added. We've seen how we can use this curve to get the present value of future cash flows and also how we can use it to forecast floating rates. Both of these capabilities help us to price swaps.
Finally, we've seen how useful a zero coupon curve is for risk management. Shifts, steepening and flattening of the curve, as well as twists and flexes, give us different discount and forward rates. We can therefore assess the price sensitivity of our swap portfolio to any set of real or invented scenarios we choose. An understanding of these sensitivities is essential to sound risk management. This is Richard Walker. Please join me in the next video where we will further develop these risk management concepts and talk about central clearing of interest rate derivatives.